so I'm making an MDF shelving unit. As always, I will start by sharing the floor plan in this area. This is the kitchen, the back door when you enter, and this is the unit that we are currently working on. These are the kitchen countertops that we just built. And this is the existing stove right here. Now currently I'm looking at basically extending this countertop here so we will have a lower height shelving unit starting in this area. It will have a pine countertop just like the kitchen. So any water splashes are not going to directly damage the MDF. And then up here where it sits around this beam it will be a full height unit and it will remain a full height unit going around the corner it will have shelving around this beam first of all for jars and dry goods it will wrap around the fridge and then on the back side here which is essentially i always call this a lobby area but really it's a i guess an entrance hall in residential terms really i should call it a boot room because it is a bit room, boots here, and then this will have a rail in it. It will have a space for some recycling bins, but this will mainly be a wardrobe. My plan is actually to have a curtain to keep these two areas separate and also to create um, a way to close off this wardrobe and to kind of keep the heat in this area. My plan is to actually make a structure fixed to the floor and a structure fixed to the ceiling for the full height portions of the shelving unit. I did lots of prep type things yesterday to prepare this area to take the shelving. I cut lots of the structure. Construction wise I also decided to build it in a way that does not use as many materials as it really should. Normally, if you were to build a shelving unit, you would build boxes and you would put the boxes next to each other, sandwich the sides, fix those together. But that means that all of the sides have two layers of boards and that's expensive. So the way I design it is that it is just a singular sheet of MDF in between the different rows and yeah saving on materials but i'm going to start on this side so for some reason i thought it would be useful to not actually put flooring in underneath the units also again to save materials um, but now i'm starting to sort of regret it oh and i'm a little bit like overwhelmed but i have been painting bits things should be sort of ready to to, to get started, but now I do have to put in this floor. Um, oh gosh. <laughs> Everything is good. Everything is good.
path's very straight. I know it should be using a guide. That's like this, I think there's a guide that comes with the, um, the thing, but it's in the box, which is somewhere. I've never used it. It seems like a lot of effort to figure out how to use it. Um, and I'm sure I'll figure it out in like a second, but this is very straight. <sighs> huh. I like it when you, when you're not scared of the tools that much anymore. <laughs> Oh, that's a little bit crooked. That's fine. All right, I'm doing some calculations to make sure I cut the MDF to the right size. Can't really make any mistakes. I think I have literally just the right amount of materials here, so... Okay. This one first. This is how we're going to cut it. There you go. Nice. I got a very exciting delivery. I got a delivery from Jackery last week, which I'm very excited about. They sent me a couple of their power stations and their solar panels. So I received the Jackery Explorer 1000 and the Explorer 240. The 240 is super cute, it's so tiny. <laughs> I love it, it's like... It's like the bunny rabbit of power stations, which is so cute. And they sent them to me to use around the plot, to share my experiences. So first I did just want to say thanks to Jackery for sending me these products because they are items that I am going to be using around the plot a lot that are very useful to me. On the one hand, they're very useful as a backup to run things like lights or a space heater or my heating cable, which keeps my water pipes from freezing during winter. I'm also just happy at the opportunity to generate my own power using the solar panels, which I've never been able to do before. And it's something that I've always been keen to try. I think for a lot of people, these power stations are also useful for camping or traveling because you can run kitchen appliances and laptops and phones and things like that. I think if I went on a luxury holiday, I would definitely bring my, um, my portable washing machine and my camping shower. Although to be honest, I use those just living in the house where I live. So perhaps my life is a luxury camping experience already. I guess that is in essence what I'm doing. Okay, so we're luxury camping here. <laughs> I guess I got the right product. <laughs> but yeah, at this very moment for me, mostly I've been using them to actually light up the outside. It gets dark so early, around three it starts getting dark, at four it's pretty much dark. I have been putting up lights around my workstation outside and it's really nice, it keeps me, you know, working until a bit later. <laughs> and it also just looks really cozy. I've got this big work light and I actually really want to get like a nice string light that I can put up outside. I don't have enough power sockets outside to, to do this normally. So that's why having the extra power stations are really useful. 
and they come with a couple of different sockets and USB sockets so you, you can use different devices with them. The whole house, everything kind of looks like a building site here so having lights to work and also make it look cute is quite cozy. <laughs> and we're headed into a festive season. We are approaching Christmas and the holidays. So I think it's only it's only nice to have a little bit more light. These short days in darkness are making me want to decorate the outside with lanterns and create that warm feeling despite it is getting colder and colder outside. We actually have Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up and I know Jackery is going to have some really good discounts so if it's something that you are interested in that you might think you can use just like me just around the plot or for traveling or as a backup then this would be a good time to check it out during the discount date because you know obviously getting a discount is always better than not getting a discount. <laughs> So yeah, definitely worth checking out. I, for one, am very thankful that Jackery found my channel and was happy for me to try them out. I have a predicament. First though, let me show you what I've got. I cut some of these pieces and I have this section here going all the way up. Now this is my issue. This beam, oh my goodness. I mean, first of all, put all of these sockets, but they're just gonna be here for a while. I'm gonna put them on the facing side of things so, so you can actually access them. <laughs> what I should have done is just put a, put a backdrop to this, but I've used all of my wood to build around this beam and it, just doesn't look very nice like this so not sure how to approach this I think first I'll just have to start painting the only problem is that it's kind of raining outside rain isn't good for an MDF You know, it's crazy, it's about four o'clock maybe, and it's dark. That went so fast. If I was further up north, I'd be standing in the snow right now. <laughs> that would be fun.
Okay guys, last week I painted this sage green, although it looks like a smoky blue, and I've decided I'm going rogue, I'm going rogue. Something is changing. I know we love it, but something is changing. Okay, am I losing my mind? Wow, this is very dark. Okay, let me explain what happens. When I was working on fig figuring out this shelving unit um, a few days ago, I was working with these. I had these little bits of green MDF left over from the, um, the little unit I made in the toilet and originally I was going to use the same colour for all of this but then decided it was too dark which is why I got the sage green which looks like a smoky blue but when I was trying to figure out this unit I kind of put it against this and I really liked the colours together and now I figured out for the shelving unit which wraps into the lobby area which is really dark it would be best to keep it the lighter colour but so I thought maybe I should paint this as a backdrop in a dark green so this is what I'm doing I have no idea whether <laughs> it's a good idea but that's, this is what's happening so on, on these little areas here you will have this colour as a backdrop for the shelving as well because the shelving is open so you can see the, the back, you can see the wall behind it. And I think it might be really nice, like it's, it's a little bit terrifying right now because it looks really dark. <laughs> I guess like, I can always paint it back, I can always just make it light again if I don't like it. This is crazy. I don't like it, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is really dark. Okay, I don't know how I feel about it, but I'm just, I'm gonna go with it because I think, you know, I don't I, I need, I need some colour. I'm not, you know what, I'm actually not huge in colour, I'm not a very colourful person. This house is turning out a lot more colourful than I imagined it. But I think it's good. I think I think it's fun. We're going with it. You know, paint, paint, paint. You can paint over paint. It's all good. Happy days. We're happy. Just 
old painting I found in the show is not very good. So all I have. This is a crazy decision I made. What am I doing? Huh. This is very dark. I know I went rogue, but okay, I like this. I am more excited about this than I was about the sage green that looks like a smoky blue. It's definitely more me and I really like how, I actually really love how the green plays with the ivory. I think it's gorgeous. It needs another layer. I think it's going to look really nice with the smoky blue, blue sage green shelving unit. Actually this would keep, look really cute if you could put like picture frames up, kind of decorate it. Obviously it's more like a workspace right now. 